Hey people, Intrate here, 1v1, Caldera, Safinery, Blue Side. We have Olev with a very colourful Hive Tyrant, a durable hero that walks through objects and cannot be suppressed with powerful disruption and support begins in melee combat with a basic synapse to help out his little tyranid buddies. I shall call you Ramirez. Red Side is local ghost with a tech marine, starts off in ranged combat, puts out some good damage, can also support his structures and repair. We have some Blood Ravens recolored into kind of blend in with the map actually. Double Hormagons into some Termigans for Olev. Maybe some Raveners afterwards. They seem to be incredibly popular these days with the old Tyranid fellas. Going down the west side, Hormagons will probably go mid. No, they want to cap that first. Fair enough, fellas. Termigants will probably stay near the high of Tyrant. They can't really like solo other units very well. Tech Marine can take some shots at this guy, 30 DPS piercing on that thing. Should wear him down quite well. Look at that, that was two bursts. Did like 83 damage. Not bad, it's a no cap game so far. Oh, it's double Hormagons, double Termigants. Oh no Rav, I promise, says Olev, okay then. If no P devs, a gentleman's agreement versus 10 foot alien and superhuman in power armor, maybe. Still being chased by the Hive Tyrant. I mean, look at his weapons. How do they not instantly kill everything? Some more tactical marines for local ghost. Former Gaunt's taking some unneeded losses there, trying to decap the power. They lost four of their little Former Gaunt's. Special attack, breaking stuff, still chasing around this tech marine. 10, 50 hit points out the gate. Can tank a single tactical marine squad for a decent amount of time. Using their Kraken bolts there, just for show. Doesn't help you against enemy heroes. They used to be the thinking, long, long time ago. I don't know if this was ever true, and if it was adjusted or something. But when you use Kraken bolts, it very slightly lowered the cooldown of your weapon it slightly altered the fire rate so that it was very marginally better to use it against everything i don't i don't know if that was ever the case or just a dawn of war 2 myth or if it was changed at some point former gaunt's capping the mid there termigants on the eastern side i'm talking uh, the the early days of chaos rising when they introduced kraken bolts so that they could fight chaos space marines better Devastators coming out of base now for local ghost. Looks like they're going. Yeah, they they know something's coming to the power. Former Gaunts with adrenal glands there will be completely completely shut down by the heavier bolter, but mistakes were made. Tore down the devastators, and they can't get their weapon ready in time. The former Gaunts are on them, and they will make short work of Devastator Marines with their adrenal glands. Eight pairs of teeth and claw on you with a damage buff. Big risk here from Local Ghost. Might drop another model. Okay, gets away with only one. Quite lucky, I think. But might have seen the Hormagaunts off the power with that. So, probably worth it, right? Those guys would have done perhaps more economic damage than a single Devastator if they bashed the node and the generator there. But here come some more Hormagaunts. Look at this. Triple Termigants for Olev. He was serious about the no Ravener thing. It's generally never a good idea to get triple Termigants against anything. Because you're just going to bleed too much for it to ever be worth it. I mean, if you need if you need more shootiness, get Raveners. But he said... They said they weren't going to get it anymore. But uh, I probably would, would have just gone Tier 2 or got Warriors or something. We'll see how it goes. But I do not expect... All three of those Termigrant Brews to make it through Tier 2. He might just suicide one of them. Or maybe they'll be amazing. Tech Marine being fired upon from two sides. Oh, look at this. Bioplasma for the Hive Tyrant. One of the rarest war gears in the game. And it's not bad. Especially now that they altered the animation so it doesn't take five years to wind his neck up and spit it at you. Tactical Marine's not going to be able to finish that cap. Does some good damage. Does it give me numbers here? Doesn't give me numbers. It would give you the numbers. 
numbers on the ability itself, I imagine. One to one cap. Where are the Devastators? They're still guarding the power over there. Termigans can't trade well against Tactical Marines usually. Unless they have cover and the Tactical Marines don't. And these guys do not actually have cover right now. They're not close enough to that, whatever it is, that thing. The improved Synapse as well, you see. Boosting the health of these non-Synapse Tyranid creatures. And the Tech Marine with the Mastercrafted Bolter on the way. Has that suppression on demand with the higher power shot. Big burst of damage too. So even if you can't suppress this Hive Tyrant, doing 140 damage. Oh wow. I think that would have wiped those guys if they didn't retreat just in time there. Bioplasma coming in. Does give him some cool options, the uh, Hive Tyrant. Doesn't want to charge in there, just chuck a Bioplasma at stuff. It's painful, it's really painful. The uh, Carnifex Bioplasma is really good too, for the Venom Cannon one. Some power bashing now from Olev. Might get it all done too. Local Ghost looking for that tier 2 at the moment, but might need to get the Salt Marines here. Here's me saying how bad Triple Termigants are, but look at the work they're doing against these gens. Uh oh, double flame attacks though. And that's one way to deal with it. Flamers do bonus damage to units that are in cover, which is why these guys are taking such heinous amounts of it. And grenade in retreat path, maybe. Beautifully done. Wipes out one of the Termigants. I thought they'd get to tier 2, but I guess not. And Hormagaunt's wiped out. Turned it around their local ghost. Here's some warrior brood fellas now for Olev. Were those the ones with the... Oh, those had the adrenal glands as well. Heavy losses for Olev. It wasn't the Termigants that had toxin sacks, though. Toxic sacks. It was toxin. Words. Doesn't have much XP. Old Ramirez. It's hard to kill Marines. Even Scouts can be slippery little bastards, can't they? Sneaking away from the decap. Didn't quite have the energy energy to throw a grenade at those fellas. And they're tired. They were capping. And being sneaky. Spends a lot of calories to be invisible. Tech Marine now has Bionics up. Warrior Brood on the field. These guys start off with power melee weapons and a nice little leap into combat. But now they have a Barb Strangler. So they lose their little leap into combat, I think. But they keep their power melee, which is alright. They still hold their own reasonably well. Oh, we tried to go in for a Bionics there, a powerful sweep, but. Those guys dodged him. Devastators being suppressed by the Barb Strangler. Tactical Marines back away slowly from these scary monsters. They can't tell anyone that though. And they show no, no fear and stuff. Advanced targeting up for the local ghost. Devastator fellas, no sign of tier two. This is a long tier one, I feel like. 414 to 402. Triple cap for local ghost. A very odd tier one as well. Double flame attacks. No Raveners, triple Termigants. All sorts of stuff going on. Got to, re got to remember, of course, these aren't necessarily competitive games. You know, maybe they are ladder games. In fact, I don't think I saw an L in the chat there. These might not even be ladder games, so... Players trying stuff out. Tactical Marines there dropping two models. Against the terrifying Adrenal Glands Hormagaunt Brood. Warrior Brood going for that Eastern... Contested power. Brood nest up. That's one of the global abilities of the Hive Tyrant. Very good one too. Allows it to reinforce and very slowly regenerate the health of nearby allies. Grenade. Between the double termigants. Only got... Oh, three models. That's not that's not too bad. I thought it only got one for a second. And they can reinforce off the brood nest when it's ready. Flamers though will make very short work of the brood nest. Doesn't have a lot of health, I don't think, does it? Only 300. And since... You know, it's a Tyranid thing, they can't repair it, it'll just very slowly regenerate health. I wonder if the Zone Throat Symbiosis works on it, I assume not. I assume it needs to be flagged as a unit, but that'd be cool. Assault Squad up for Local Ghost, they did get some. Looking all menacing there. Gonna jump on some Termigants and chainsaw them up. Olev has got a little bit of XP now. Tech Marines almost level 2. Surely, thinking about tier 2, 
Looks like Olev's going to get there first. Might be able to get a relatively quick uh, Tyrant Guard up too. Termigants, go on. Bash it. Oh, I couldn't finish the bash. They should have stayed for another second. Surely. They, were, they are having nightmares about these Flamers, I think. I mean, it gets the Tactical Marines leveled up really fast, doesn't it? Warrior Brood kind of isolated here. They are able to spot the scouts, though. They are detector units, you can tell by the handy eye decorator on top of their icon there. Assault squad. They didn't seem to get the disruption on their jump. Brood nest goes down. They get more red for a tactical marine, but I guess 15 is not bad for something that doesn't move or fight back. There's the crippling poison and Hormagaunts going in and Hormagaunts, yeah, with adrenal glands, 1v1 against Assault Squad. That's not a fight you really want to take against for an Assault Squad. You're gonna drop if you drop one model, you're kind of lost. Uh, local ghost with an idea here. The idea to build a turret on his enemy's power to really annoy the crap out of them. Short work made of it by the flamers, as you may expect. Flamer weapons and flamer-like weapons are great at dealing with structures such as generators and turrets well most turrets the Lord General's turret is special it's a big fella that turret flamers don't really scratch that thing and look at this he's facing covering all angles with the two turrets here we do have a tyrant guard but this is this could be risky if he pos positions himself wrong even with super heavy infantry you get close enough to these turrets and they really hurt you was that a called in Tyrant Guard? It might have been. Yeah, this is this is bad. But he's gonna repair it as well, I imagine. And look at the damage it's taken from this turret, because it's so close. There's the repairs. This is so risky. I think this Tyrant Guard is done for. Now, it's taken, now it took damage from both turrets for a little while there and goes down. Yeah, it took a couple of seconds of massive damage from both turrets as it tried to get away. Tyrant Guard falls to turrets. Who would have thought that? He did spend, is it six, 60 power on his turrets though? I think they're 30 each still these days. So spent a lot and they probably won't last. I imagine they're going to get another Tyrant Guard and do it properly. But we'll see. Barb Strangler misses, does have that flight time and Ripper Swarm in on the Devastators and they didn't want to fight him. And Ramirez with some decapping. So he wants to like get the Tyrant Guard and, and, and put it here and fight this turret. He should be able to win like that, take them both out I think. Any no, I was going to say any sergeant for those guys, but it's not even tier 2 local ghost. Might see a big old fight here. Are the assault marines going to jump here? Of course they are. And warrior brood alone. And there's that synapse explosion from a synapse creature going down. That knockback and 10% damage. Former Gaunt's in amongst some tactical marines now. Doing a lot of work. But there's the disruption, and they might need to full retreat here, Olev. Termigants are out. Former Gaunt stayed in way too long. And they're going to go down. And they do go down. And Bionic's powerful sweep helps to get the uh, wipe on the Termigants there. Bad fight for Olev. Look how low those tactical marines got, though, from those Former Gaunts. Ramirez here, still level 1. What about you? Mr. Tech Marine, almost level 3. Wants to go and get his power back. Look how red the map is right now. Really strange game so far. I haven't seen enough of that Bioplasma. So one good shot. I guess that's why nobody gets it. In terms of, like, differences that it, yeah, it can make to an engagement, it's typically better just to get the shield up and just be really annoying to shoot out forever. Tyrant Guard, number two. 
Oh, and number three. Come on, fella. You get them turrets. Meanwhile, Termigan's trying to cap. Warrior Brew trying to cap. And good old Ramirez having a decap over here. Gets his natural back, does local ghost. And does finally go tier two. What is this time? Is this like a 12 minute tier one? That's crazy. Feels like at least 10 minutes. Should really have a timer up for these things, shouldn't I? We have some spore mines. Do they damage turrets? I don't think so. Not especially. I guess we'll see. Do they do flame? A lot of damage over time stuff is flame damage. I assumed it was piercing, but maybe it's flame. There it was. You know what? It's not doing badly. It didn't last very long though. Okay, so he's gone to the other turret, but he's doing he's doing the correct thing here. And should be able to deal with at least one of them. Here comes some support. Devastators are level two. Level three tactical marines. Down goes one turret. And if he gets... Oh, wow. Bioplasma came out of left field. If he gets into range, into melee range, the turret can't shoot him anymore. So down it goes. This turret guard has forgotten what he's doing. Assault squad. What were you guys doing? Trying to kill stuff, I suppose, eh? One of the tyrant guards goes into shield wall. Other one. What are you going to go for, fella? Going for the tech marine who's got a melter gun. So he is a threat to those tyrant guard. Melter does extra damage against super heavy infantry armor. Ramirez having a good time. Killed a devastator marine. Would be doing so much work here if he had his rending talons or crushing claws, of course, but hey. They cost resources. We have... Oh, now we have double plasma guns for the tactical marines. These guys can change their special weapon as much as they like, as long as they pay for it each time. Not cheap. The tech marine barely got away. And those vengeance rounds are doing work against the tyrant guard. Needs to be careful here. I assume he has the charge available. Maybe. I don't see a charge. Looks like he's just got out of range of the Devastators. And now, there's the Shield Wall. Gives it vehicle armor and allows it to regenerate health. So these guys can't really touch it. But these fellas can if they get close enough and use their Vengeance Rounds. 227 to 350. There it is. They might finish it off here. Seems like the the start of the burst. Look how inaccurate it is at the start of the burst. That's really weird. Look at that. How are you missing? The assault marines also acting very strangely here. Look at that guy. What's wrong with him? Bioplasma went in and knocked back the devastators. Grenade almost got his own assault marines there. The Ramirez is just standing and watching now. Two, two, one to three, four, eight. Here he comes. The tyrant guard lives. It lives, you guys. Is this guy going to live, though? There's a plasma gun shooting at him now. He needs to go into shield wall. I don't think he has energy to do so. There's a melter bomb. It's going to go down. Boom. There it goes. Now some gene stealers on the way for Olev. And if he can deal with the, with the devastators quickly, with the bioplasma or whatever, they can do a hell of a lot of work against this. It's a lot of it, but gene stealers are cool. Still doesn't have his power back, Olev. Still managed to get Gene Stillers up and three tiring guards, though. Only one of them remains. I mean, got some Hormagons here, too. Help with the map capping and all that. 221 to 319. Axe of the Mechanicum for the Tech Marine here. Power melee weapon that drains energy on hit. Actually can mess with the tyrant guard because he needs energy to charge and do his shield wall and stuff. Tell me guns are going to find something they need to shoot over here. Oh, I think he queued up a command. And they're just going to go off to the next one. Here are the gene stealers. Melee superiority unit with power melee damage. Supported by the Adrenal Gland Warriors who give them melee synapse. Massive bonuses as you can see there. 40% more health. 
and plus 10 melee skill also makes the warriors themselves better with more health and 30 heavy melee dps as you can see up to 1633 at level one not bad at all on three models Tell me against get jumped ripper swarm is there to help out 176 to 319 shotgun blast on the rippers rippers are really small so they're hard for ranged weapons to hit pretty sure you can still smack them around in melee just fine though here come the gene stealers what are they gonna go for oh they're having a look okay big old retreat from local ghost that was his first time i think seeing the gene stealers does have a librarian to very quickly reposition the devastators in the, if needed with veil of time and stuff going for the power and finally getting his power back here Cormagaunts are on it with adrenal glands what is it to reinforce devastators five power eh when they're looking at the power there we go we'll get some xp for the gene stealers too here if they can destroy stuff that is Rippers are going to try and run interference. 153 to 319. Big VP lead for local ghost. But it's ticking down. Impressive special attack then from the tech marine. But those rippers are already dead. They got the node. Then a big old retreat. And we might see. Oh, I thought he was going to chuck his bioplasma out. And then. Oh, there we go. And then back away. Going to try. He hit something. Well done. Did some good damage there. You saw the, the wind up time. It's quite long. It used to be even longer, which made it quite difficult to hit moving units. I think that was the idea from Relic. Use this on stationary units kind of thing. Librarian on the field with a Psychic Hood. More energy, more energy regen. And Gate of Infinity, which you can use to teleport things around. Which is handy. Tactical Marines with a Plasma Gun and Sergeant. There's a smite from the librarian. Scouts being sneaky and decapping stuff. Ramirez, look what's going on over here. Don't let it happen, buddy. They are going to be visible once they start tapping again. There we go. Could be a pivotal engagement here. Look how much red local ghost has. Here we go be a big old fight scouts are off the field so we're not going to see any sneaky grenades merciless strike was in there warrior brood and now g stealers join in this is not a fight a local ghost wants to stay in i think oh kills a warrior brood kills another one maybe they do want to stay in it hive tyrant still here though providing improved synapse to the gene stealers they won't have the melee skill bonus anymore though and the 40 percent health bonus as well but they're still in here and they're tearing apart marines. Tactical marines barely getting away. Tyrant guard is in there too. That was a bad jump by the assault marines. Jumped into death maybe. They can't jump again. Don't have the energy for it and they're going to wipe and they do wipe. Misplay from local ghost should have jumped those guys out. Rather than in. So how did it shake out? I think local ghost lost the devastators and lost the assault marines and now loses the tech marine okay it wasn't bad it wasn't bad at all four staff is up on the librarian 136 to 284 and a brood nest is reinforcing these guys oh look at that ramirez went down maybe that's what the assault marines were doing and that's when they jumped back here perhaps might see a nasty grenade here Oh, they go for a shotgun. Level 3 scouts, though, they can very quickly use their grenade if they want to. Librarian picking the fight he might not want to pick. Doing well, you know. Doing well, uses his quickening to try and get away. Or maybe that was Veil of Time on himself. Seemed to stand up to those gene stealers remarkably well there. Looks like he wasn't taking damage. Maybe quickening was up and I just didn't see it. That's an ability that improves the librarian's speed and increases his damage resistance i believe i don't think that that's like a, one of those abilities that hasn't been touched very much over the years over the many years tier three on the way for local ghosts and they have all of the red please please drop in 
a venerable dreadnought for your old friend Indrid. Ramirez level two, back on his feet. Got some big old feet. Level three, Tyrant Guard. This thing is scary now. Up over 3,000 hit points. Crunching through those tactical marines there. And more rippers. He's used them well, Olev. And by use them well, I mean use them. You know, just get them in there and mess with stuff. And look at the map now. So very blue. You've even got generators over here. Another brood nest goes up. Although, yeah, none of this stuff needs to reinforce right now. Tier 3 for Olev. Tech Marine is level 5. He's done well with his powerful sweeping bionics and his axe. But uh, Tyranids know how to melee. Still no weapon for Ramirez. Level 4 scouts being sneaky. Want to go for that natural VP or are they going to chuck a grenade here? Just scoping stuff out. Trying to stay well clear of the warrior brood of course. Oh, Melter Gun's back. Tyrant Guard says no thank you. Grenade on the brood nest and they are going to go for the decap I think those scouts. Brood nest taken out by the Melter Gun probably. There we go. Was it worth it though? It's going to lose the tech marine here I think. Yeah, needed to Im immediately retreat and then pr pray to the Emperor to get away. There's your Force Barrier. Oh, the Hive Tyrant gets inside of it. So do the Hormogorts. Back in the day, of course, it was a... Uh, and still, I believe, in retail, you have to channel the, the Force Barrier. That was something that took... I think it was about two years for the modders to figure out how to make it a fire and forget ability. It was at least a year, I believe. It was like a real sticking point. But they did figure it out. The lead model was uh, Lulgrim back in those days. We have a level 2 librarian and a tier 3 Lictor on the way for Olev. 123 205. Ramirez level 3. But look at them scouts go. They know how to cap stuff. There should be like a, a tier 3 upgrade for these guys, like 30 power to give them the faster capping trade. That would be so amazing for these fellas. They found some warriors. Well, the warriors found them, I suppose. Oh, is this a venerable dreadnought? It must be something good. They wouldn't drop tax in, surely. Nope, here's a venerable dreadnought. A walker unit unique to the tech marine. This thing's so badass. 1750 hit points at level one. And look at it go. Inspires on kill, of course, like all Dreadnoughts do. And it can charge. You just saw the charge then to get close to the Lictor. Can't get a ranged weapon, unfortunately. It's made to mince things in melee. It's very good at it. Smack. Level 2 Termigants. Just going to fight some Rippers. Oh, you get two red from. That's not bad. I'd expect them to be one. Scouts. Annoying that warrior brood there, leading them on. A merry chase. Tyrant Guard versus a Venerable Dreadnought. Because of the difference in armor, the Venerable Dreadnought with the vehicle, and this guy with super heavy infantry. Can't win that fight really, because the Venerable Dreadnought is doing full damage to the Tyrant Guard. The Tyrant Guard is only doing half damage to the Dreadnought. Although it does have way more health, the Venerable Dreadnought also does more DPS anyway. 117 to 148. Flesh hook doesn't stop the cat, but this guy's dead. I said this guy's dead. There we go. The Lictor, the tier 3 Lictor can infiltrate for free. Doesn't drain his energy, it's a big deal. Try and burn down this capillary tower. 105 to 148. Has local ghost clawed their way back into this game? With that venerable, venerable dreadnought drop. Here's the warrior brood to try and get the VP back. What is this? Just, just the tech marine punching a couple of genes that is about 20 feet. He's a strong fella. Eats all of his vegetables. You know, they pipe them into his stomach through his suit or something. But he eats them. He's getting his axe back out. 
Oh, the Dreadnought didn't smack him on retrieve. Very disappointing. Right, he's sad now. I'm sad too, buddy. Might want to destroy this drop pod. It will give reinforcement. No, it won't. Does a venerable Dreadnought drop pod reinforce? I don't think it does. That would be a little bit mental. It does provide some cover, though. Hey, a can effect. Maybe it'll, it'll be a Venom cannon to try and shoot this thing. What's Ramirez up to? Looks strangely forlorn. I'm not sure what he's up to. Maybe trying to take a long way around to this VP. 86 to 148. Scout's got their cap done. Going for this power now, but it's going to see some more harassment from the Lictor. And some Termagant buddies. Now we have some tax dropped in. Drop pods are cool. One thing I liked about Dawn of War 3 was the drop pod system where you could put pretty much any any unit you wanted, I think, in the drop pods. Kind of preload them and then and then chuck them into a fat into a fight. Really cool system they had there. The grenade. Might get the wipe. Deserves the wipe, I think it, they, they do get it. Level 2 Gene Stealers going for a decap on the mid. What were you doing, Ramirez, over here? Capping that stuff, I guess. I want to see fighting all the time, Ramirez. There's the uh, Force Barrier again. Biopla Bioplasma kicks off the fight. And what, what targets are you choosing, fellas? I guess they're ignoring the Dreadnought, which is smart. Tear apart the tactical marines. No attempt to escape from local ghost. They're putting a lot of faith in the venerable dreadnought here. And it is a venom cannon carn effects taking shots at that dreadnought. Gene stealers are gonna wipe, maybe. Can a dreadnought finish him? Oh, so close. So close. 25 hit points on two models is pretty lucky. Meanwhile, Ramirez is capping. 36 to 138. Emperor's Fist then. It's on the Dreadnought. It's going to kill the Warriors, I think. Boom. Warriors be gone. Now Ramirez is mad. Still doesn't have a weapon upgrade. He's going after the Scouts. Former Gaunts are also in there. Scouts of their Taekwondo. Nick Alpha got the cap over there. Is that a triple now? It is a triple. They are reinforcing off the drop pod. But down goes the venerable dreadnought now has 10 seconds of stoicism where it constantly inspires nearby troops before it falls there it goes i think it does more damage as well during those 10 seconds bioplasma from the carn effect was a really strong bioplasma it's really stronger much stronger than the hive tyrants i think you can really mess up tanks with it and stuff hormagaunt's going down on retreat Desperation at the end here. Triple cap for Olev. Have they done enough? The map is almost completely blue. Surely they have. What a crazy game. Local Ghost could drop a nuke here. Librarian level 3. Done his fair share of Xenos purging. But it might be too much for the Space Marine fellas. Tech Marine trying to decap the mid though. And he did get the natural back. There are gene stealers here though, which are terrifying for these tactical marines here. Smack, smack, smack. These guys heal on hit. And if they use their adrenal rush ability, they heal even more and get more speed and all sorts of stuff. 36 to 18 on the VPs. Where is that orbital bombardment, local ghost? Should have been on that central VP there. Can't see it now. We need vision to use a nuke. Gene Steelers can't get a decap. And Sneaky Tech, old oh, Librarian actually got to the VP over here. He's gonna get away too. 26 18, it's so close. He's not repurchasing Ramirez for the final push. Oh, there's the orbital. It's on the uh, Termigants. That's gonna surely wipe them out. Is it gonna blast before they cap? It does. And they are no more. Bio, bioplasma from miles away. Wow, that's really long range. Couldn't save the 
Formagons that were there though, 25 to 18. Not sure what the cooldown on the Bioplasma is. I guess maybe we'll see. Maybe we can work it out. With the power of counting seconds. Lictor is going to maybe jump on the mid to, to mess up this cap. Couldn't quite make it there. Not sure why I didn't just walk forward a bit more. Now they have the cap there, local ghost. Misplay from Olev right at the end of the game. Gene Stiller's looking for something to eat. Or not. They are capping, are they? No, yes they are. The Lictor was capping, then the Gene Stillers were capping, now nothing is capping. Lictor's gonna go down if he's not careful. Here comes Ramirez, the Hive Tyrant. Level 4, goes for the cap. 16 to 18, 1 to 1. What was that? What did local ghosts just get? Some more tactical marines, I think. I mean, they're good at capping. I'll give them that. But here comes some gene stealers. Some healthy level 3 gene stealers. These guys are dead. But he, he has to go for this. He has to try and get a decap at least. If they retreat now, maybe they'll get away. Oh, special attack's going in. Look at that damage. Hey, they might make it. Kind of got knocked away in a favorable, favorable position there. So Olev's going to get a 2-1. to There's another Khan effect on the way. I'm not sure if Local Ghost has enough to get this cat back here. All of these guys are injured. And none of them can do much against the Khan effects. With plasma guns and stuff. Librarian going for it. What's he up to? It's almost level 4. Throws out the smite. And Gene Slayer's kind of laugh at it. But then, smacks him all over the place. There's a 2-1 to one for Olev. Broodnest is up in the mid. And this is going to be it. Oh, good Bioplasma right at the end on those level 4 attacks. There you have it. Ramirez takes it. Also known as Olev. A level 4 Hive Tyrant. We had a level 7 Tech Marine down at the, at the mid. What a hell of a game. All over the place. Some unconventional builds. No Ravenous allowed apparently. No Plasma Devs allowed. And they stuck to their word. It was, uh, it was fun. Hella fun. Had triple attacks at the end. Two of them level 4. Was really cool to see them with the double flame is just how much damage they did to those termagants. The Lictor did well too. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.